So for problem number eight, we're given that a spring has a natural length of 20 centimeters. Um, since we will be working with metric units, we have to convert that to meters. So it has a natural length of 0 0.2 meters. And it says that a 25 Newton force is required to keep it stretched to a length of 30 centimeters. So what that means is that when you stretch a spring and you it's stretched, you need to apply some force to hold it stretched because if you don't, it's just gonna back, ba bounce back to its original length. So what we're saying is that if we stretch it a little bit further to where this total length is 30 centimeters, so 0.3, so this total length is now 0.3, um, it requires 25 Newtons. So we're gonna use the force equation for a spring, and that's Hooke's law, that says that the force required to hold it is equal to k, which is the constant, times x, which is the distance stretched. So the force is going to be 25, is equal to k, which we don't know what it is, times x, which is the amount stretched. Well, when it was resting, it was 0.2 meters, and stretched, it went to 0.3 meters. So that actually means that it was stretched 0.1 meters. So that's k times 0.1, because it needs 25 newtons to hold it stretched 0.1 um, meters. And then k, we're just going to divide 25 by 0 0.1, and that gives us 200 and, um, 250. And the units on the force is newton, and on the distance is meters, so this is going to be newtons per meter. Okay, so once we have the value of k, now they want us to um, calculate the work required to stretch it from 20 to 25 centimeters. And now we have to think that the work is just a force applied through a distance, so force times distance. However, the reason that we have to use calculus is because this force is variable. Um, it's not a constant force. It's a force that's variable because it has an input of x, and x is the distance. So that force is constantly changing. So if you want to add something that is constantly changing, you do have to use calculus, where you're going to think that this is on the x-axis, which measures distance, and instead of going force times distance, you're going to go, go force times dx, which is a little chunk of the distance, and you're going to sum all of that using the integral. So um, we have to remember that work is going to be the integral of force times distance, but now that's going to be an infinitely small distance, so force times dx. But then force itself is uh, a function in terms of x. It's this equation over here. So we can replace that with k times x. So k times x. And remember that we already found k. k is 250, right? So we can remove that k and put 250, and we're going to put that outside. So I'm going to say w is equal to 250x dx. And now what we're going to do here is we just need to put the boundaries for this. So um, the boundaries for it, it begins at 20 centimeters. So we're going to put 0 here because at 20 centimeters, it wasn't stretched. So it was stretched no distance further than its natural resting state. But then it goes from 20 to 25 centimeters. So it means that it was actually stretched five centimeters, right? And since we're working with meters, we have to convert five centimeters is gonna be um, 0 0.05 meters. So that's what we're gonna plug in for the upper boundary. So once we have this, we're now ready to integrate so this work is going to be equal to 250 times, that's going to be the integral of x is just x squared divided by 2, evaluated from 0 to 0 0.05. So if we simplify this a little bit, we can put the 2 outside, so 250 divided by 2 is going to be um, 125 and then times 0 0.05 squared. And then we don't have to subtract the lower boundary because that's just going to go to 0. Um, 0 0.05 squared, and that is going to give us 0 0.3125 joules, which is the unit for work. Um, so that is it. All we did here was first we used the force equation to find the um, k, which is the constant for this particular spring. And so once we found k, we calculated the total work to stretch it a length of 0 0.05 meters. Um, and we did so by realizing that the work is just the sum of a variable force, so we use the integral for that one. And that is it for problem 28.